driving through the country to visit their family. One day, late at night, they were on a lonely country road. That's when a powerful storm broke and their car tire burst. They had to leave the vehicle to find help, but there was nothing and no one around. Some time later, they came across an old and spooky mansion that seemed abandoned, but the guys decided to try and see if anyone lived there and could help them. They arrived at the mansion gate. On a metal address plaque, it was written, The House of Riddles. Gemma and Andy got suspicious, but they desperately needed shelter from the storm and some help with their car. So they decided to enter. But the gate was locked. There was a digital security keypad on it and nothing else. Suddenly, they heard a sound coming from the gate intercom. A voice said, The answer to this riddle of mine is the password you need to unlock the gate. I sleep by day and fly at night, but I have no feathers to aid my flight. What am I? That's a bat. When the guys arrived at the door, they saw there was something engraved on it. Stop right there, wanderer. Don't knock on the door just yet. For if you knock more or fewer times than you should, that you're gonna regret. Here's your second riddle. I am an odd number, but I become even if you take away a letter. What am I? Gemma and Andy realized that the number equaled the number of times they had to knock on the door for it to open. Can you help them figure out the correct number? The answer is seven, so they had to knock on the door seven times. A scary old butler opened the door and let the guys in. The door suddenly closed behind their backs and then just vanished into thin air. There were no doors in the room they had entered. The butler said, Welcome mortals to your doom. To make it out of this house, you have to solve every riddle in every room. If you can't, you'll stay in this place forever. Here's your riddle for this room. Which bride is marrying this groom? If they managed to figure out the answer, a door would appear. If they could not, well, too bad. Do you see the shadows behind them? The third bride's shadow is holding hands with the groom's shadow. They're in love. So she must be his chosen one. After they answered the riddle correctly, a door appeared in front of them. They got into the next room, which was a library. Three books fell from a bookcase in front of their feet. Then they heard the butler's voice echoing. You have to open one of these books, but choose wisely, because whatever creature the book mentions, it will appear here. If Gemma and Andy opened the first book, a venomous basilisk would come out. If they opened the second book, a giant piranha monster with razor-sharp teeth would appear in the library. If they opened the third book, a fire-breathing dragon would charge at them. Which book should they choose? Since the giant piranha is a water creature, it can't survive on land, so the guys should choose the second book. The library door opened, and they walked into the next room. It turned out to be a dining room. A large mirror covered one of its walls. Yet, the reflection of the room in the mirror had some differences from the real room. Can you spot them? The reflection of the deer statue in the mirror has more antlers. In the reflection, you can see someone hiding behind the curtains. But there's no one besides Gemma and Andy in the room. And lastly, in the mirror, one of the plates on the table is different from the others. But in the real dining room, all the plates are the same. Gemma and Andy felt very hungry. Thankfully, the next door that opened led them to the kitchen. There were three different chefs inside. The first chef was a zombie. The second one was a vampire. And the third chef was human. Each of them was holding a pie in their hands. But only one pie was safe to eat. Which one? Do you see the bugs coming out of the zombie chef's pie? Yikes! The pie that the human chef is holding is glowing in a weird way. Looks dangerous to me. 
So they should choose the vampire chef's pie. Because that's not blood, that's cherry sauce on top. If it was blood, the vampire would have already eaten that. After they answered the riddle, two doors appeared in front of them. One of them had Gemma's name on it, and the other had Andy's. The butler sneaked behind the guys and pushed Gemma through the Gemma door, and Andy through the Andy door. Gemma fell down a pit and found herself in a mysterious garden. She accidentally woke a garden gnome who had been sleeping. He got very angry with her, and still, he agreed to let Gemma go if she answered his question correctly. He showed Gemma three tiny mushroom houses and asked which one was his home. Can you figure it out? Do you see the flower on the gnome's hat? The door handle of the second mushroom house handle is the same flower, so that must be his home. Andy, on the other hand, fell into a magical dungeon. The dungeon guard was an ogre, and he looked very pleased to finally have a prisoner. Yet he agreed to let Andy go if the guy chose the correct magical portal to escape. Two magical portals appeared in front of him. Each of them led to a room. Andy had to stay inside the room of his choice for five minutes. The first room was full of poisonous gas that would knock him out in four minutes, and the second room was filled with water. If Andy opted for this room, he would have to be chained to the floor with the water rising really fast. In which room can the guy survive? Andy should choose the first room. He should take a breath and try not to breathe for a minute. After that, he'll have to wait for four minutes for the door to open, and then he can escape. Both Gemma and Andy were magically transported to the hallway after having answered their riddles correctly. They were happy to be together again. At the end of the hallway, there was a door. And in front of the door, a witch stood. She placed three long magic wands on the table in front of her and said, You do not need to do anything to one of these wands. One you must break in half, and one needs to be even shorter than that half. The witch added that they could only answer once. And if their answer was wrong, she wouldn't open the door. So, can you tell which wand should be the longest, which one they need to break into half, and which one needs to be the shortest? Do you see those spiders hanging from the ceiling? Since the door is shaped like a spider, they must be giving Gemma and Andy a hint. The silk thread that the first spider is hanging on is the shortest, so the first wand needs to be the shortest. The silk thread that the second spider is hanging on is the longest, which means that the second wand needs to remain as it is. And the silk thread that the third spider is hanging on is of a medium length, which means that the guys need to break the third wand in half. The witch opened the door and Gemma and Andy entered a bedroom. Three spirits were floating inside, each of them claimed to be the owner of the mansion. Gemma knew only one of them was telling the truth. Who is it? The spirit of the elderly lady is telling the truth. Why? Let's rewind a bit. Did you notice the portraits hanging on the walls in the hallway? There's a portrait of this very lady. That can only mean she used to be one of the owners of the mansion. The next stop was a living room. When they walked in, Andy saw something weird. What was it? A face appears and disappears in the fireplace. The guys entered a study next. What's so weird here? The fingers of this medieval knight's armor are tapping on the sword. The next room was a guest bedroom. What's weird here? The crystal ball is showing someone trapped in the basement. Gemma and Andy decided to take a look at the basement in case someone really needed help. Yet, they had to crack another riddle to enter. There was a password panel and they needed to type in seven digits to unlock the door. They had no idea what the passcode could be. Luckily, there was a note on the wall and this word was written on it. What does it even mean?
turn the note upside down. What do you see now? The letters look like numbers, right? So the passcode is 183737. There were three people in the basement who claimed to be trapped there, but only one of them was telling the truth. Who is that? Do you see the stitches on the elbows of this lady? She's a creepy rag doll, so she's lying. And this man has claws instead of fingers. He must be a shapeshifter or something. Then it must be this guy who's telling the truth. So Gemma and Andy took him with them. After the guys answered every riddle in every room correctly, the butler appeared again. Thank you, travelers. Now you're free to go. But this, you must know. All of us in this house are cursed. Answer this one last riddle for the curse to be reversed. Once we are finally free, we'll help you with your car too. You'll see. There are nine people in front of you. One of them is a monster who cursed us. Tell us who. This guy has two horns that are hiding in his hair. He is not a human. He's a monster. All right, you super sleuth. In this detective challenge, there are three levels. Each next riddle is trickier than the previous one. Naha! To get to the end and find out your results, you'll need to concentrate hard and use all your detective skills. Level 1 Anthony lives in the south of town, 20 minutes away from college. Mark's house is in the north and a bit closer, just 10 minutes away. Their lectures start at the same time, and the guys always meet in the park on the way to their classes. Who's usually further from the college building when it happens? The boys meet at the same point. It means they're the same distance away from the college building. Milan Airport Customs officers noticed that one man traveled abroad at least several times a week. They started to suspect he was a smuggler, but couldn't understand what he smuggled. He always had a suitcase or a bag with him, but there never was anything forbidden or expensive inside. Only several months later, when a new customs officer joined the team, the mystery was solved. What was it the man smuggled? He smuggled designer suitcases and bags. Detective Dan Carlos was following a criminal who had stolen his watch. This person, Dan didn't see whether it was a man or a woman, ran for a hospital building and disappeared inside. When the detective rushed through the doors, he saw two doctors examining their patients. One of them had to be the criminal he was looking for. But which one? It's the woman on the left. Her stethoscope earpieces aren't in her ears. Emily had passed a difficult test with flying colors. But for some inexplicable reason, her professor's sure the girl cheated. After arguing for a while, they come to an agreement. If Emily solves one riddle her teacher will give her, she'll get to keep her high mark. On the piece of paper the professor hands her, there's just one word. House. The girl doesn't need much time to figure out the answer. What is it? In this case, the color matters. The answer is greenhouse. Little Adam knew his older brother Philip got some money for his birthday. But however hard Adam tried, he couldn't find it. One day, when Philip was away, the boy sneaked into his brother's room. There was no money, but Adam found a map. The older boy had hidden the cash in the garden. Adam followed the instructions to a T. 10 steps to the left, 15 to the right, then 8 straight ahead. It must be here. The boy started to dig. He wasted 2 hours and still found nothing. Did Philip trick his little brother?
Adam's steps were much smaller than his brother's. That's why he was digging in the wrong place. Level 2 It was the middle of a working day, and Helen was in her office. Suddenly, her home security system informed her there was someone inside. The woman called the police. She was sure the intruder had been sent by her competitors. She thought he was after the memory card with the information about her new project. When the police arrived, there was indeed a man in the house. They searched him but found no memory card. He couldn't have swallowed it. Then where was the card? When the police got him, the man secretly slipped the memory card into one officer's pocket. After being searched, the criminal retrieved the card. The manager of a ski resort has gone missing. The police suspect three people that are staying at the hotel. Unfortunately, no one can find any of these people. They're probably on the slope skiing. The police officers have no time to waste and decide to examine their rooms. Look at the suspect's stuff and say who is behind the disappearance of the manager. It's Joe. He's the only one who doesn't have warm clothes or winter sports gear and equipment. It means he didn't come to the resort to have some fun. Jason, a rich traveler, stayed in a small but expensive hotel at the seaside. During a severe storm with gale force winds, there was a blackout. The whole area was plunged into darkness. People stayed without electricity for at least two hours. The problem was finally solved. But Jason discovered that during the commotion, someone had taken his wallet with tons of cash and all his credit cards. The police arrived and questioned the people who had been in the hotel at that time. Justin, the receptionist, told the detective he had been in the basement. He had been trying to start an emergency generator. Unfortunately, he didn't succeed. Nicole, another guest, said she arrived an hour before the blackout. She was exhausted. She lit several candles, unpacked, cleaned herself, and went to bed. Gregory, the hotel driver, said he had been at the airport. A new guest had arrived, and he went to pick him up. The police immediately figured out who was lying. Can you? The blackout was caused by a bad storm. And planes don't fly in such windy weather. Then how could someone arrive by airplane? Gregory lied. In the 22nd century, robots live among people. And it's nothing out of the ordinary. But sometimes, they resemble people so much, it makes detective work way harder. Like this time. Eric Blank, an experienced police officer, has to figure out which of the three suspects is guilty of identity theft. He knows for sure the culprit is a robot. But who isn't human? It's the girl in the middle. She has a USB port on the side of her neck. Level 3 Maria had to take part in a very important sports competition. But several days before the event, her boyfriend, Keith, found out the girl had disappeared. The only thing she left behind was a note. I'm sorry, I had to leave. We'll never see each other again. Please call my sister Jenny. Her phone number is 2121-736362. Confused by the message, Keith went to the police. I think Maria was taken away against her will and made to write this note. She is an only child in the family and doesn't have a sister. The police started an investigation. They found three people who could be behind the disappearance. Cheryl, Maria's competitor, said she had been at her mom's house, resting before the competition. Aaron, Cheryl's coach, told the police he'd been spending all his time at the gym. And Kyle, Maria's coach, said he had felt unwell and stayed in bed. Who knows something about Maria's whereabouts? In her note, the girl didn't write a phone number. 
This way, she encoded the criminal's name, Aaron. Boy, who needs a coach like that? Janet had a dream. She wanted to become her professor's assistant. The man was a famous and talented scientist. The man knew she was a smart girl. But before offering her the position, he decided to put her to the test. The professor took her to a house with two rooms, completely isolated from each other. In one room, there were three switches. In the other room, there were three light bulbs. Janet had to stay in the room with the switches. She was allowed to go to the other room only once. She had to understand which switch was connected to each of the bulbs. The girl managed to solve this task. How did she do it? She turned on the first switch and waited for a minute. Then she turned it off. After that, she flipped the second switch and went inside the room with the bulbs. One of the bulbs was on. It was the one connected to the second switch. Janet touched the remaining bulbs. The warm one was connected to the first switch, and the cold one was linked to the third switch. Kyle lived on the sixth floor of an apartment building. Once, the man was having his coffee on the balcony. Suddenly, he spotted a woman on the eighth floor of the building opposite his. She opened the window and threw something with a great force. In no more than a minute, Kyle jumped to his feet and ran to call the ambulance. They arrived soon and rushed the woman to a hospital. What did she throw out of the window? It was a boomerang. Hey, I didn't say all these people were smart. Do you feel like cracking another Rebus puzzle? This time, a more difficult one? Take a look at this. What does it mean? Safety in numbers. <laughs> if you've managed to get through the first level, you have better logical skills than many other people. Watching more detective movies can make your observation skills sharper. If you've left behind two levels, congrats! You must have strong analytical thinking skills. Just pay a bit more attention to details. If you've passed all three levels, wow, way to go! Very few people can get to this point. You must be the one people ask for advice in tricky situations, because you can find a solution to any problem. Carl, an heir to a giant fortune, was found unconscious during a wild party. His sister, Sarah, stumbled across him in the bathroom. The guy was lying on the floor, barely alive. Sarah immediately called the ambulance and police. Carl was taken to a hospital. Doctors saved his life, but the guy was still unconscious. He couldn't talk. When the police questioned Sarah, she told them that her brother had felt unwell. He went to the bathroom to freshen up. After some time, she heard some noise and went to check on him. Carl must have slipped and hit his head on the sink. After the police officers heard this story, the sister got arrested right away. Why? For one thing, it happened during a loud party. How could the girl hear any suspicious noise? Carl was also lying too far away from the sink, which was on the other side of the bathroom. Boy, with a sister like that. Look at this picture and try to figure out who is from the future. Well, I'm pretty sure there were no flashlights in the Stone Age. All the people working in the office, Janice, Brian, Teresa, Sean, and Roy, used the fridge in the kitchen to store their lunch. On Friday, Janice opened the fridge to get her bacon and cheese sandwich she brought from home. But it wasn't there. Someone had eaten her lunch. Who was it? Well, it couldn't be Brian. There's a wet umbrella near his desk. He has just come in. Teresa is a vegan. She eats neither cheese nor bacon. Roy is on a diet, and such a sandwich is by no means light food. This means Sean was the one who stole Janice's sandwich. You bad boy. 
When Joe came to work, he saw his safe was open. All the money and important documents were gone. He immediately called his friend, Detective Callum. When the man arrived, Joe told him, I think it was one of my employees. They must have borrowed my key and opened the safe. Callum questioned the three people who worked for Joe. Wayne said, I don't even know what the safe looks like. And of course, I don't know which key opens it. Austin said, I'm Joe's assistant. I do have the second key to the safe, but I was on holiday and just returned. And Julia just said, I can't prove it, but I didn't do it. Who's lying? Wayne. No one told him the safe could be opened with a key, not a combination lock. Then how did he know? Someone stole several expensive t-shirts in a designer clothing store. The manager told the security guard he had half an hour to find the thief. If you don't make it in time, you'll be fired! The guard rushed to watch the CCTV footage. Luckily, he managed to figure out who the thief was before his time ran out. And do you know who it was? It's the man in the dark blue sweater. His belly miraculously became larger after he spent some time in the store. He must be hiding the t-shirts under his sweater. Look at this picture and try to understand what's wrong here. The reflection in the mirror is all wrong. Terry was sailing around the world when his yacht got caught in a terrible storm. At one moment, the guy hit his head against the mast and lost consciousness. When he came around, he was on a beach. Unfriendly-looking locals had gathered around. Soon, Terry figured out they really didn't like strangers. They offered the guy three options. To send him to a cave filled with tarantulas, throw him into a pit swarming with yellow scorpions, or make him meet hungry lions. What should Terry choose to survive? He should opt for tarantulas. These creatures look terrifying, but they are mostly harmless to humans. Mostly. Captain Jack was a feared pirate who had robbed thousands of ships. He did it with the help of just one small trick. It allowed him to approach any ship from any country close enough to board it. What was this trick? Captain Jack had a collection of flags from different countries. Instead of using Jolly Roger, the fearsome black flag, he raised the flag of the country the ship was from. It got him immediate access. Wow! While working late at night in a top-secret laboratory, Michael finally managed to create the DNA of a hybrid monstrous creature. After all that hard work, he decided to grab a quick coffee and donut as a little reward. But he came back and saw that the specimen had disappeared from the incubator. Hmm. Michael lined up Ryan, Jeff, and Laura and confronted them. Who took an important top-secret piece of research I was working on? Ryan said he'd been busy doing some additional research on a separate project and had no idea what was going on. Jeff said he hadn't touched the hybrid creature and had been in the archives digging through some files he needed. And Laura said she'd been in the bathroom the whole time. So who took the specimen? Michael never mentioned that he was dealing with a hybrid monstrous creature. Jeff just let himself get caught. Better think smart next time. Anne absolutely loathes winter. But just like anyone else, she has to go out and do stuff. She had just moved to a snowy city for work and experiences some of the coldest winters. But she managed to make it to the mall to do some quick shopping through a huge blizzard. When she came back to her parked car, she discovered that someone broke into it and took her belongings. When the police lined up the three suspects, they each gave their stories. 
Francesca said she had been polishing her car outside and didn't know anything. Ned said he had been shopping for clothes, and Earl said he had been sitting in a cafe on the upper floor of the mall. The police arrested the suspect. Who was it? Francesca. She was polishing her car outside in the middle of a blizzard? That's not only illogical, but not safe either. She just gave herself away. You wake up and find yourself trapped in a room with four doors in front of you. You don't have enough time to choose which door leads to freedom. You hear a monster coming, so you check out the doors quickly. The leftmost door has a sign on it saying, take the door on the right to break free. The second door also has a sign saying, it's the right door. The third door has a sign, freedom is just right in front of you. And the last door has a sign, don't trust the signs. Which door should you choose? The last door. It says not to trust the signs, but it doesn't mean that they're lying. The first door says to take the door on the right. Not necessarily the last door on the right, but just the one on the right. The second one says it's the right door. Not the correct door, but the right door, as in the door on the right. The third door says freedom is just right in front of you. That just doesn't make any sense, does it? So it's the last door on the right that leads to freedom. Mason was extremely happy when he got the news that his sister Jane was coming to town. He had just started a new job and couldn't wait to host her for the first time. She was only able to see some nice pictures of the places he visited, including where he lived. When he picked her up from the airport, he noticed something slightly off about her. She was robotic with her responses and seemed stiff with her movements. She wouldn't eat and only insisted that she wanted to rest up. Strange. Had he been watching too much sci-fi? After a while, Mason hears a knock on the door, and to his surprise, it's Jane. But I thought… Jane tells him that the Jane in his apartment is an imposter. When the Jane in the bedroom goes out and sees the other Jane sitting on the couch, they're both in shock. They both try to convince Mason that they're the real Jane. But who will Mason believe? It's pretty normal to come back from a trip pretty tired and wanting to rest. But how did the second Jane know where Mason lived without prior knowledge? And she didn't even break a sweat running up to the apartment. On a nice day, Vivian, who lived in a town on the seashore, decided to go for a hike alone. But after hours of trekking, she ended up on a section of the forest she wasn't familiar with. Before her were three paths. One path had bare footprints leading away. Another had human shoe prints, and the third was right by the river. Which one should Vivian take to find her way? The river path. Since she lives in a coastal town, the river mouth most likely ends up in the sea. That way, she could figure out where she is. Melissa is sharing a train car with three other people. It's a very hot day, and the air conditioner doesn't even work. James starts complaining and only calms down after opening the window. Melissa lays down her red silk scarf her grandmother gave her next to her. Judith compliments it. Robert, a senior, mentions that he forgot to bring a gift for his wife who will pick him up from the train station. James has a crush on Judith. After a while, Melissa goes to the bathroom and comes back to find the scarf missing. Who was the one who took it? None of them. It was a hot day and James opened the window. The wind sent the scarf flying right out of it. Some zombies have Diego trapped in a room. They're surrounding him. 
he's stuck and can't escape. Their arms are breaking in and reaching for him. When Diego looks around, he realizes that he's in a small newspaper stand with magazines and pocketbooks. And looking around him more attentively, he finds a roll of tape nearby. How can he avoid those nasty bites? The only way for Diego to escape will be to tape those magazines around crucial parts of his body where they can't lay his teeth on him. It'll be light enough for him to run away from the zombies without getting hurt. Plus, he'll have plenty of reading material for the road. Evan got lost in a forest, and just his luck, it was snowing. The only thing the police searching for him found were four parallel lines leading into the forest. Something doesn't seem right, they thought, and took several people into questioning. Nick said he had been at the store buying some groceries. Vanessa said she had been babysitting. Christina had been at work the whole time. After hearing the stories, they arrested Nick. Why? Nick was in a wheelchair. The four parallel lines were left by Nick rolling into the forest and back out. It's the beginning of a new school year, and Dave started a new job as a computer studies teacher at a local high school. Another fellow teacher, Roy, didn't really welcome him because he wanted that position. But at the end of the day, there was a security breach which leaked out a lot of important information about the school. When the police questioned everyone, including Roy and Dave, they each gave their stories. Dave said, I was checking exam papers and was at the staff room the whole time. Roy said, I was preparing homework for my classes when everything happened. Who should the police arrest? Who was lying? Dave. There wouldn't be any exams on the first day of school. Gareth is in a pickle. He's at the police station looking at the lined-up suspects, one of whom stole Beth's bag while she was having a picnic in the park. He observes them. Beth describes the culprit as someone big, no hair, and wearing a black jacket. All the men lined up match the description. Gareth looks at each of them, and they all have one distinct trait that makes them stand out from each other. Suspect number one has a beard. Number two is wearing shorts. And number three is wearing glasses. Gareth knows immediately who to arrest. Who is it? Suspect number one has dirt all over his boots. The rest are all clean. He ran through the mud tracks while Beth was having a picnic. You wake up in a room with no windows or doors. The ceiling is extremely high, and the only way out is a closed hatch at the very top. Suddenly, the room starts filling with water. You've checked everywhere. There's no way to turn it off. You know that help is on the way, but they won't be here for at least five minutes. You're pretty sure the entire room will be flooded in two. You definitely can't hold your breath for that long. You look around and find three objects. A straw, some rope, and a bucket. Only one of them can actually save you in this situation. Which one should you choose, and how's it going to help? You should take the bucket. Flip it over and put your head inside when the water gets to head height. You'll have your very own small air pocket to help you breathe until help arrives. Uh Uh-oh, you're in a building that just caught on fire. You need to escape, but the fire just keeps spreading and spreading. You're feeling dizzy, and the smoke is making it hard to see. And the heat? It's insane! Suddenly, you see three paths that lead outside, but it's not going to be so simple. There's no fire near the first exit, but it's on the opposite side of the burning room. The second exit is right in front of you, but the upper part is completely covered in flames. The final exit is through the kitchen. There's shattered glass everywhere, but the flames are barely touching it, and the door is wide open. Which exit should you take? (laughs) 
Even though the first exit isn't on fire, an indoor blaze is totally unpredictable. Flames can pop up out of nowhere. Going through a kitchen is never a good idea in a fire. There might be exposed gas lines in there. Your best bet is to go for the closest path and crawl your way to safety. Well, you're stranded in the middle of a desert and are in desperate need of water. You crawl along, trying to find any source to hydrate yourself. As nighttime rolls around, the wind gets stronger and it starts to get cold. You sit down next to a tree. How are you going to find water in the middle of a desert? Grab two of the largest tree branches you can find, and then rip your outer shirt and stretch it out over them, kind of like a sail. Shove the two branches into the sand to anchor them. The water in the atmosphere will get caught on the cloth and drip down for you to collect. Well, you're tied up on some railroad tracks and can't wriggle free. There's a train heading your way, and it doesn't look like it's stopping. Oh well. If you stretch your arms out, you can just reach a lighter, a small pocket razor, and a can of oil. Which can you use to escape? Pour the oil on the ropes holding you down. It'll act as a lubricant, and you'll be able to wriggle free. Taylor finished another awesome ice fishing session. He packed up his gear and walked back home with his dinner. Halfway back to the car, he realized he was being followed by a hungry cougar. It started chasing him. Taylor was so close to his car, but the cougar was gaining on him. What should he do? He should fling the fish to the side to distract the cougar. Then he should ditch all his gear. It's just slowing him down. That way, he's got a chance of making it to the car before he turns into cougar chow. Well, you find yourself in a pitch black room. The room is huge and there are many hallways and corridors leading to unknown places. You need to find your way out before the room starts heating up like an oven. You only have two minutes. You can feel some pipes on the wall but nothing else. How can you save yourself? When the pipes start heating up, they'll probably turn red. It'll already be super hot by then, but you'll have just enough time to figure out the layout of the room and find a way to escape. Angela decided to go for a nice walk in the forest. Mm -hmm. About an hour in, she tripped and spilled all her water. No problem! Right in front of her was a tiny lake, and close by, a small stream and a cactus. Which one should you use to get herself a refreshing drink of water? She should head for the stream. That lake isn't moving. That means it probably has bacteria living in it. And a single cactus won't have enough water to quench your thirst. Even though the stream is pretty small, moving water is almost always the safest option. What are those things? Ah, oh, paw prints! Those are bear tracks heading to the forest, a wolf print coming out of the forest, and some elk prints heading toward a lake. Well, what's the best place to go if you're not into the whole being eaten thing? Think fast! The bear going into the forest probably scared that large dog off. Oh, you thought those were wolf prints? Mm, not likely. Wolves mostly travel in packs. The bear is most likely chasing the elk, so they'll both end up at the lake. That means the forest's safe for now. You're stuck in a well in a small village, and the water's already up to your knees. There's a rope leading to the mouth of the well, but it's definitely not strong enough to hold you. You look around and find a bucket, some clothing, and a lighter. How do you escape? Shove the clothes in the bucket, tie the bucket to the rope, and light the clothes on fire. Then quickly hoist the bucket up. Chances are, in such a small village, someone will see the smoke and run over to help you. Kate finished her morning hike and decided it was time to go home. She saw a vintage jeep parked by the hiking path. While she was admiring it, a huge grizzly appeared in front of her. The bear didn't seem that interested in her, for now. But that could change any second. There was a large screwdriver on the floor by the jeep. What can she do to make sure the bear won't be interested in her? She can puncture the gas tank with the screwdriver and douse herself in gasoline. 
That way, the bear wouldn't be so interested in her scent. Eric was out camping and he needed some light to see in the dark. He reached into his tent, but his flashlight wasn't working for some reason, and his phone only had 10% battery. He looked around and saw a bottle of water, an empty sandwich bag, his hiking boots, and a pillow. What can he do to make more light? He can take his phone and put it right next to the water bottle. The water inside the bottle will diffuse the light, making it much brighter. Adrian and Jack went rock climbing all day, then realized it was time to head home. After a long walk through the woods trying to get to their car, they realized they were totally lost. They'd never been in these woods before. They didn't have a clue what to do. What's worse, Jack collapsed from exhaustion and couldn't take another step. Adrian tried to lift him up, but Jack was too heavy. Night was approaching. He tried to call for help, but neither phone had any signal. His only choice was to venture out and seek help. He checked both gear bags and found a small pick hammer, some ropes, some sturdy locks, and a harness. What should he do? Adrian should put on the harness and tie all the ropes together to make one huge long one. Then he should tie one end to Jack and one end to his harness. That way, if he got lost in the woods, he'd be able to find his way back to Jack. That's one long rope. Nora's family was out for the day, and she was going to surprise them all with a triple chocolate raspberry cake. Right after plugging in her mixer, she heard a small pop, a fizz, then the electricity shorted out, and her precious mixer broke out in flames. Her phone was in the other room. Quick, help her! She's got to stop the flames from getting worse while she sprints over to get her phone and call for help. What should she do? She could take some flour and dump it all over the mixer. It'll tame the fire and buy her enough time to call for help. Roy went out for a small walk in the forest right behind his house. He was having a great time, chucking stones at trees and thump. He launched the stone right into a beehive. A swarm of bees flew out and started chasing him. His house was pretty far away by this point, and there were tons of bushes and shrubs in his way. There was a huge open field in front of him with a deep lake in the middle. Where should he go to escape the angry bees? Jumping into the water to escape from a swarm of bees doesn't work. They'll just wait right above you and sting you when you resurface to breathe. The trick is to run as far away as you can, head for the house, and shut the door, Roy. Discover the Sun was a very popular travel agency. It sold package tours to the hottest and most exotic destinations. But one day, the police found out this company helped criminals flee the country. They also learned the exact date when it would happen the next time. On that day, several police officers arrived at the airport. They stopped a group of tourists who were flying to a Caribbean island. But the detectives didn't know the criminal's identity. That's why they had to search the baggage of all the customers. Look at their bags and say who the criminal is. It's the young woman on the left. If she's going on a package tour to a hot place, why does she need a winter jacket? Eric is trapped in a room. It's slowly filling with water that's coming from a tap in the wall. There are no windows in the room, and the door is blocked. Eric has a mop and a big bucket. What can he do to survive? The only thing the guy needs to do is to turn off the tap. Ah, you knew that, didn't you? Laura agreed to take part in a riddle competition. One of the tasks was to get out of a locked room. She had to figure out the code for the combination lock. And the only thing that could help her was this note. 2 equals 6, 4 equals 26, 5 equals 426, 6 equals what? In a couple of minutes, Laura was already leaving the room. What was the code? The code was just one number. Six. 
6 equals 2 because 2 equals 6. Megan invited her friends to her favorite restaurant to celebrate her birthday. They were having a lot of fun. Megan got the best birthday present ever. Her friends gave her a diamond ring. Suddenly, the room plunged into darkness. After several minutes of total confusion, the lights came back on. But Megan's ring was gone. Look at the picture thoroughly and try to figure out who stole it. It's the waiter! Look at the glass he's holding. He put the ring inside. Now, there's much more water in it. Jacob's girlfriend Nicole loved riddles. One day, she was on a business trip to France. She called Jacob and told him it was her relative's birthday. Could you go and congratulate them, please? When the guy asked her which relative he had to visit, Nicole answered, It's the daughter of the only son of my grandfather. Who is this mysterious relative Jacob is asked to congratulate? It's Nicole's sister. Brandon was a police officer. That day, he was patrolling the streets of the small town where he lived. When the man was driving past his best friend's house, he saw that the front door was open. He decided to check if everything was okay. As soon as Brandon entered the hall, he spotted his friend lying on the floor. After the man was taken to a hospital, the officer went to question the neighbors. Julie said, I've been planting new fruit trees in my garden since early morning. Nathan said, I have some problems with my car. I was in the garage all day long trying to fix them. And Patrick told Brandon, They aired a new episode of my favorite TV show. I stayed at home to watch it. Which neighbor is lying? Nathan. His hands and gloves are spotless. It wouldn't be possible if he had been repairing his car. This means he's lying. Ms. Lopez took her students to an art museum. Half an hour into the excursion, a worried museum worker approached the professor. He told Ms. Lopez one of the exhibits, a precious vase, had been damaged. The culprit could be no one else but one of the students. Only three of them came close to the vase, but who ruined it? Maria said, After I looked at the vase, I noticed my makeup was smudged, so I went straight to the bathroom. Antony said, I didn't touch the exhibit. After looking at it, I went to the next room to see the dino skeleton. And Nathan said he had been following Ms. Lopez taking notes. One of these students is lying, but who? Antony. There are no dinosaur bones in the art museum. Someone broke into Samantha's house through the window and stole some valuable things. When the police came, she told them she suspected her younger brother Sam. The police officers went to question the guy, but he denied everything. I was playing basketball several days ago and broke my arm. It's in a cast now. I wouldn't be able to get into the house. The police officers left, but the next day, one of them saw Sam in a cafe. The guy was still wearing the cast but the officer immediately arrested him. Why? When the police visited Sam, the guy had the cast on his right arm. Now, it was on his left arm. Look at these two families having dinner. One is munching on pizzas with different yummy toppings. The other is having steaks and vegetables. Can you figure out which family is poorer? No matter how tasty the pizzas are, they're still cheaper than large pieces of meat. This means the family eating steaks must have more money than the second one. Keith had a tragic accident when he was a teenager. Unfortunately, it left the guy blind. He was dreaming of being able to see again for years. One day, Keith was lucky to find a doctor who told him a special surgery could solve his problem. 
Keith agreed right away. The surgery went well, and the guy took a train to go home. His girlfriend accompanied him. The doctor told Keith he had to wait for at least three hours before taking the bandages off. Keith was so impatient and excited, he could hardly wait for the time to be over. Three hours later, they were still on the train. And even though his girlfriend was against this idea, the guy wouldn't listen. He slowly pulled off the bandages, and then he screamed and lost consciousness. Why? When Keith opened his eyes, the train was going through a dark tunnel. The poor guy thought he was still blind and fainted. To pass an exam, Dennis has to solve a riddle. 2 plus 2 is the same as 2 times 2. Find a set of three whole numbers whose sum will be the same as their total when multiplied. Dennis gave the right answer almost immediately. These numbers are 1, 2, and 3. Tyler was going to his friend's place in the evening when a stranger in a black mask caught him. The next thing the guy knew, he was in a large room, locked in a cage. There were three levers in the wall next to the cage. If he pulled the first lever, he would let hungry lions into the cage. The second lever would fill the cage with water. And the third lever would activate a special mechanism. It would make the top of the cage move down towards the bottom, crushing everyone and everything inside. Which lever should Tyler pull to survive? His only choice is the second lever. All the water will flow out through the bars of the cage. Joan came home one evening and discovered that someone had burgled her house. When the police arrived, first of all, they went to question the neighbors. Victoria said, I was visiting my friend. She lives two blocks away. I came home a couple of minutes ago. Peter explained to the officers that he was ill. He only made a short trip to the pharmacy and stayed in bed after that. Nathan said, My wife and I were preparing for a barbecue party. Our friends were supposed to come to us. But as you see, it's pouring with rain and we had to cancel our plans. The police officers realized that, for some reason, one of the neighbors was lying. Who was it? Victoria. It was raining, and she said she had just come home. But her hair, clothes, and the umbrella, which was standing near the door, were absolutely dry. Matthew has only black and white socks but he keeps them all mixed. One evening, the guy's in a hurry. He's getting ready for a romantic dinner with his girlfriend. Mm -hmm. Suddenly, the power goes out. Now it's completely dark in the room. The guy has 10 white and 10 black socks in the drawer. He can't see anything. How many socks must he pull out of the drawer to get two matching ones? Just three. In a set of three socks, he's bound to have two socks of the same color. Look at the picture carefully and try to figure out which person is left-handed. The waiter is a lefty. It's easier for a left-handed person to hold the tray in the right hand and deal with the food and drinks with the left or dominant one. A farmer only has goats, sheep, and horses on his farm. At the moment, they're all horses, but five. All goats, but four. And all sheep, but three. So, how many of each animal does the farmer have? There were three sheep, two goats, and one horse on the farm. Altogether, there were six animals. Meh. Kira is a very independent young lady. Yeah. Two years ago, she moved into a one-story house in Alaska. Since then, she's been living there with her dog. Her house is made of sandstone, and it's pretty cozy and warm. 
Can you guess the color of the stairs inside? There are no stairs in a one-story building. One day, Kira went to town to buy some dog food and meet with her sister, Mia. They went for a walk and stopped in front of these two houses. In each house, a family with two pets with dogs or cats lived there. Kira told Mia two facts about those houses. On the left, the family has a dog that likes dry food, but the other pet loves canned food. And the family in the house on the right has a seven-year-old dog and a newborn pet. Mia asked Kira, Do both families have a cat? Kira replied, I'm not sure, but if you manage to guess the house with the cat, I'll give you $100. Can you guess which family is more likely to have a cat? Okay, let's analyze this. The house on the left offers us three possible scenarios. A younger cat and an older dog, a younger dog and an older cat, or just two dogs. We can't consider a cat-cat option because Mia mentioned that there was at least one dog in that house. Now, all these three options are equally possible, and two of them include cats. So the chances of a cat living in that house are two out of three. As for the house on the right, there are two possible scenarios, since we already know that the older pet is a dog. Here's the first possibility. The younger pet is a cat, and the older animal is a dog. And the second possibility suggests that there are just two dogs. So, here, the chances are one in two. That's why Kira should choose the house on the left. This way, her chances of winning are higher. Mia invited Kira to visit her workplace. She's a manager in a luxury resort hotel. The building has seven floors. Five people are now staying in the rooms on the first floor. And on each next floor, there are three people more than on the previous floor. Can you figure out which floor the elevator is called most often? To the first floor. Any person living not on the first floor has to call the elevator to get to their room. Will is a famous billionaire. He decided to stay in the best room in the hotel. He's got three gold bars that weigh four, two, and one pound respectively. The charge for the room is one pound of gold per day, and the hotel staff don't accept any advanced payments. Will wants to stay at the hotel for seven days. How can he pay for the room? Here's the scheme. On the first day, Will should give them his one pound bar. On the second day, he should give the two pound bar and take his one pound gold bar back. On the third day, Will should pay with the one pound bar again. And on the fourth day, the guy should give the four pound bar and take both the one and two pound gold bars back. On the fifth day, he can pay with the one pound bar. On the sixth day, he can give them the two pound bar and take the one pound bar back. And finally, on the seventh day, Will should pay with his last one pound gold bar. Will offered Mia a deal. If you crack my riddle, I'm going to give you the biggest diamond from my collection. Ah. He arranged these matchsticks in a square, which contained four smaller squares. Can you remove only two matches so that there's only two squares instead of the five? Mia nailed it right away. What about you? Here's the solution. You have to remove these matchsticks, and voila, you have only two squares left. Then Will offered Kira an opportunity to win a fortune. There are 100 precious red stones and 100 simple white stones in his collection. The billionaire gave the girl two different bags labeled heads and tails. She can put the stones wherever she likes. Then, Kira has to flip a coin and choose a stone from the corresponding bag heads or tails. If it's a red one, she will receive all the precious stones, but if she picks a white stone, she'll get nothing. How should Kira distribute the stones to increase her chances of winning? If she puts just one red stone in one bag and all the other stones in another, her chances of winning will be three in four. Let's wish her luck! 
There are both humans and werewolves in the lobby of this hotel. They look very similar, so you can't identify who is who by their appearance. Both people and werewolves tell either only the truth or only lies. These two handsome gentlemen came up to Mia and Kira. Adam said, Bill is a lying werewolf and I'm a human. And Bill said, Adam is telling the truth. Can you help Kira and Mia decide who these two guys really are? We know that they cannot tell half-truths. So, Adam's statement is only true if both parts of it are true. Let's suppose that Bill is an honest human. Then Adam should be honest too. But Adam called Bill a liar, which creates a conflict. It means that Bill's statement cannot be true. So Bill is a liar. Hmm. And knowing that, we can conclude that Adam is a liar too. But what about their nature? Are they humans or werewolves? Adam's first statement is a lie, which means that Bill is not a werewolf. Therefore, Bill is a lying human. And the second part of Adam's statement means that he's a lying werewolf. Adam and Bill invited Kira and Mia for dinner. When they asked the ladies about their parents, Kira replied, We have the same father and mother, and we are both born on the same day. Adam asked, Are you twins? Mia replied, Nope, no we're not. How can this be possible? Have you guessed? Kira and Mia are not twins. They're two of a set of triplets. They have a third sister, Sophie. Hi. Kira and Mia went to the swimming pool. They saw 10 swimmers chilling on sunbeds near the pool. Two of them decided to jump into the water. How many swimmers remain near the pool at that moment? The two swimmers might have decided to get into the water, but it doesn't mean they've done it. Kira entered a very small dressing room. There were four cats sitting in four corners. There were three cats across from each cat. And at each cat's tail, there was one more cat. Can you tell how many cats there were in the room? The room was very small. Each cat was sitting near the tail of the cat from the neighboring corner. In the ladies' room, Mia met this weird woman standing in front of the mirror and applying some lipstick on her forehead. Ah. Can you guess what's going on? She's trying to make up her mind. In the basement of the hotel, Mia and Kira found a barrel with no lid and some milk in it. Kira said, Whoa, this barrel of milk is more than half full. Oh. And Mia said, no, it's not. It's less than half full. Yes. Without any measuring tools or pouring any milk out of the barrel, how can they easily determine who's right? They should tilt the barrel until the milk touches its lip. If the bottom of the barrel is visible, it's less than half full. And if the bottom is still completely covered with the milk, then it's more than half full. A large group of students came to a scientific conference held at the hotel. 280 students study chemistry, 254 students study physics, and 280 students study biology. At the same time, 97 students study both chemistry and physics. And 138 students study both physics and biology. And 152 students study chemistry and biology. Also, there are 73 students who study all three subjects. Can you figure out the total number of students at the conference? Take a look at this Venn diagram. Now, it's obvious that the total number of students is 500. Mia gave Kira three shoe boxes labeled red, blue, and red and blue. She said, I labeled the boxes incorrectly. You can only open one box of your choice and then label the boxes correctly. If you do it, I'll give you all these shoes. Can you help Kira label the boxes? Kira 
Kira should opt for the box labeled red and blue. Since the boxes are labeled incorrectly, this box will contain either red shoes or blue shoes. Let's suppose that Kira found red shoes inside the box. Now she can remove the red label from the wrong box and put it on the correct one. Meanwhile, the box labeled blue cannot have blue shoes inside. Neither can it contain red shoes. It means the blue box must contain both red and blue shoes. Now, Kira has only one remaining box that she can label as blue. And if inside the red-blue box there's a pair of blue shoes, Kira can use the same logic to label the remaining shoes. Take a look at the table. How many matches can you see? Eight. Here they are. Two couples are about to get married. The hall is full of guests. The bride looks stunning in these long white dresses. And the groom seems to be absolutely happy. All of a sudden, one of the guests noticed there's something wrong with one of the couples. Can you guess what? Mary and Alex have no reflections at all. Look at this decorated mirror behind them. They must be vampires. I wonder how Mary did her makeup. Samantha and Julie wanted to have a peaceful Sunday afternoon. They decided to have a hot air balloon ride and headed to the park. The instructor offered them to choose which one they wanted to ride. A blue one, a green one, or a yellow one. Samantha loves the blue one. No surprise, look at her clothes. And Julie wants to go for the green one. Which girl isn't very attentive? Samantha, the color isn't that important. There are no sandbags. You want to have a safe ride, don't you? In one of the galaxies, there's planet pink. There are many people, but few animals. Only hens and roosters live there. They can be of three different colors, pink, red, and yellow. Andrew went to that planet to see his friends for the weekend. And while he was walking down the street, he saw three bird couples in love. No bird can be with the partner of the same color. Can you guess the color of the partner of the red hen? It's the yellow rooster. The red hen can't go out with the red one. And the pink rooster, as you see, is madly in love with the yellow hen. Emily's aunt has bought a bottle of perfume for her niece's birthday. Sadly, she couldn't keep it because Helga, her sister, is terribly allergic to perfumes. Emily brought it back to her aunt, who bought it for $65. The old lady sold it to someone for $80. Then, suddenly, she remembered she had another niece, so she got it back for $70. Sally, the forgotten niece, turned out to be allergic too, so the auntie had to sell it again for $60. Did she make any profit? Yep, she made $5 and grabbed a large latte for them. A genius invented a watch he thought no one else but him could read. A minute on his watch lasts an hour, and an hour lasts a minute. The watch shows the right time twice a day. Can you read it? It's 5.30, just like it is. The genius changed the hand, placing the hour hand instead of the minute hand and vice versa. Well, that doesn't seem that genius. Somebody was stealing important documents from the office. The guards didn't see anyone, neither did the secretary. The boss decides to install the security cameras to find out who was doing it. They checked the footage carefully and found out who it was. Can you guess? It's the man in the white shirt. When he went out of the office, he had two folders in his hand. At the beginning of the day, he had only one. Jamie wanted to know if his wife cheated on him. Mm. He wasn't sure if she actually went on that business trip in Australia. He asked her to send a selfie, which she did. When he saw the photo, he knew exactly that his wife was lying to him. How did he guess? Well, it's January in Canada, and the streets are full of snow. How come there's snow in Australia? It's supposed to be summer there. Everybody knows that an old witch lives in this spooky old house. Nobody really wants to meet her. 
Mary is in this house right now, but she seems to be alone. How come? Who said witches can't have the name Mary? Back in the day, she was young and beautiful too. Jack has a small shop that sells socks. One day, he decided to attract more people and launched an advertisement. Socks for free. Many people came there, but all the customers had to pay, even though the socks were free. Why? Jack would only give the left sock to his customers. They looked nice and people wanted to buy it. Who needs only one sock after all? A man was driving his car all the way from New York to LA. At the end of the trip, he discovered that one of his car's tires had been punctured from the very beginning. Still, he reached his destination successfully. How is it possible? The punctured tire was a spare one. You're trapped in a room that's slowly getting filled with water coming from a faucet in the wall. There's no windows in the room and the door is sealed shut. You have a mop and a big bucket. So how are you going to get yourself out of this one? Come on, just turn the faucet off. Now it's better. There are five girls in the room. Nicole is talking on the phone, Kimberly is reading, Jessica is playing hide and seek, and Melody is tidying up. What's Sarah doing? Sarah is playing hide and seek with Jessica. Five, six, seven. Five, six. Which number is missing? A small hint, it's not seven. You have seven seconds to do the math. Number eight is missing. The subsequent number of 567 is 568. Sally works as a barista. This morning, she dropped a cup full of coffee. Luckily, her white shirt wasn't stained, but it took a while to clean up the mess. How come? There were coffee beans in the cup. They ended up right under the counter. Imagine you've just entered a pitch black room. There's an oil lamp, a newspaper, and some kindling wood inside the room. You only have one match. You have to make a tough choice. What to light first? The oil lamp is definitely a good choice, but it's still incorrect. First of all, you'll need to light the match. After the bank had been robbed, the police found the money in the park among cacti. After the police officers arrested all the suspects, they almost immediately figured out who the bank robber was. Can you do the same? This guy on the left has scratches left by cacti all over his body. There are six glasses in a row on the table. The first three are filled with orange juice and the other three are empty. Your task is to make full and empty glasses alternate by moving just one glass. How can you do it? Take the second glass and pour the juice in the fifth glass. Dennis was at home watching TV. All of a sudden, his wife's super expensive vase fell and broke in their bedroom. He ran into the room in time to see a stranger jump out the window and run away. Dennis tried to chase him, but his glasses fogged up because of the cold. That's why he couldn't identify who it was. When the police arrived, they listened to his story and immediately knew he was lying. The man made the story up to not tell his wife he'd broken the vase. How did they know this? Anyone who wears glasses know they don't fog up when you go from a warm room to the cold outdoors. It's the other way around. Adam Nixon, who didn't really like oh. modern art, rushed into the city gallery and caused millions of dollars worth of damage to several paintings. 
Yet the manager of the gallery thanked Mr. Nixon for his actions. How come? Adam was a firefighter. The water from his hose damaged several masterpieces, but he still managed to extinguish the fire and saved many more exhibits. Jane was on a hike in Africa when she decided to cross a bridge to admire the view. When she was in the middle of the bridge, she heard something moving behind her. She turned and saw a huge hungry lion waiting for her. She turned to the other side. There were giant snakes. The water to her left was filled with hungry piranhas. Where should she go? She should jump into the lake. Piranhas don't live in lakes, especially in Africa. They live in South America. Look closer. These are just some harmless fish. Two fathers and two sons found three oranges. When they shared them, everyone got a whole orange. How come? There were three people, grandfather, father, and son. Once upon a time in a spooky forest, there were seven trolls who were all brothers. They were all born three years apart. The youngest troll is 100 years old now. How old is the oldest brother? He's 118, looking good for that age. A man wakes up in a place he's never been before. He rushes to the exit and sees two doors. When he opens the first door, he sees that the hall is made of magnifying glass. The scorching hot sun fries anyone who enters in no time. Behind the second door, a huge dragon breathing with fire is sleeping. But anyone who enters this hall risks waking it up immediately. How did he escape safely? He needed to wait for dusk. There's no sun, and he can easily get out of that place. The owner of an ice cream parlor filed a theft report. Someone stole all the money from the register. He was only gone for like two minutes. Detective Callum showed up 20 minutes later. There were three people inside. Ainsley said she had been talking on the phone with her friend. She hadn't seen anything. Red said he just arrived a couple of minutes ago. Joshua said he wasn't really paying attention. He didn't notice anything. So, can you figure out who's lying? Who stole the money? Rhett said he had just arrived. But his ice cream's already melted. Liar. Phoenix wanted to get her dad the best birthday present ever. But she didn't know what he wanted. She decided to break into his laptop to see what he had saved in his online shopping cart. One problem, the laptop required a password, and Phoenix didn't know it. Luckily, there was a note next to it. She sent a picture of it to her friend, Detective Callum. He solved it right away. Can you? The note doesn't make sense because it's upside down. Flip it over, and you'll see a sequence of numbers 88, 89, 90, 91. The numbers before it are 86 and 87. So the password is 8687. Detective Callum traveled to a small neighboring city where young women were being kidnapped every day. Four had already gone missing. They all lived on the same street. Their names were Ava, Bella, Celeste, and Daphne. There were only three women left on the street. Ava, Riley, and Georgia. Callum had to act fast. Who would be the next target? The women are getting kidnapped in alphabetical order. A, B, C, D. The next target will be Ava. Mr. Coleman's mansion was robbed while he was on vacation. He immediately called Detective Callum. Everyone who had been to the house got interrogated. Sydney, his sister, said she'd gone to the house a couple of times to find some papers on Mr. Coleman's desk. Samantha, the gardener, said she'd come every week to water the plants. Asher, the cleaner, 
said he'd come every Friday to clean the house. Callum found all three of their fingerprints on Mr. Coleman's desk. He now knew exactly who the robber was. Who? It was Samantha, the gardener. Sydney and Asher had a reason to touch the desk. But Samantha wasn't even supposed to be in Mr. Coleman's office. There aren't any plants in there. A rich woman was robbed on her private yacht during a ferocious storm. A witness said they saw Kai watching the woman right before she was robbed. Kai denied everything and said he was in his cabin at the time, writing a letter to his wife. Detective Callum asked to see the letter. Five seconds after Kai handed it to him, Detective Callum put him in handcuffs. Why? Kai said he wrote the letter during the storm. There's no way his writing could be this neat when the entire yacht was swaying around like crazy. Logan, a young businessman, was poisoned in his house. Detective Callum was on the scene. Pretty soon, he had three suspects. Logan's girlfriend, Michaela. She said she hadn't seen him that day because she was busy at work. Next, there was his business partner, Rob. Rob said they'd had an argument, and they both got pretty angry, but he hadn't poisoned Logan. The last suspect was Blair, the driver. She said she wouldn't know how to poison someone even if she wanted to. Who should Detective Callum arrest? Look, there's fresh lipstick on Logan's shirt. It matches Michaela's. But she said she hadn't seen him that day. Suspicious. Eloise found her friend Fleur poisoned in her room. She called Callum and told him she was walking past Fleur's house and noticed her light was on. She texted her, but Fleur didn't respond. She got really worried, so she broke a window, climbed in, and found her on the floor. But Detective Callum didn't believe her. He immediately arrested her for poisoning her friend. Why? Eloise said she broke a window to get in. If that was true, the broken glass should be inside the room, but it wasn't. Eloise had to cover her tracks, so she broke the glass later from the inside. A college student was robbed during a flag presentation. Detective Callum arrived to investigate the case and interrogated several suspects. Kennedy said that she was in the bathroom at the time. Gavin said he'd noticed that the Japanese flag was hanging upside down, so he'd gone over to fix it. Eleanor said that the student who was robbed was her best friend. She would never do that. Who's guilty? It's Gavin. He said that the Japanese flag was hanging upside down. But that flag looks the same either way. He's lying. You go to a swimming pool once a week, and today's the day, but everything suddenly goes wrong. As soon as you enter the swimming pool, you look at the TV in the hall. Breaking news! Someone spotted a zombie in town. They probably went downtown, and they may be anywhere. If you see one, call the police immediately. You think it's probably safer to stay in the swimming pool. Zombies are slow, and probably aren't good at swimming. So you go to the shower to change, but as soon as you enter the shower room, you notice that something's off. Who's a zombie? The two girls seem completely fine, but there's a bandage on the man's leg. No one would go to a swimming pool if they had cuts or scratches, unless they're a zombie. Once upon a time, there was a wealthy king who hired an artist to paint his portrait. The artist told the king that he wanted to be paid in gold, and he wanted to get paid every day. He also said it would take him seven days to finish the painting. The wealthy king had only large bars of gold and he wanted to give one bar for his work. But since the artist wanted to get paid daily, he needed to come up with a plan. He had a magic tool that could cut any material, but it was able to make only two cuts. How did the king split the gold bar so that the artist got his gold every single day in equal amounts?
The king was really smart, so he cut the bars this way. 1 7 2 7 and 4 7 The first day, he gave the artist 1 7 of the gold bar. The second day, he gave him 2 7 but took 1 7 back as change. The third day, he gave 1 7 back. The fourth day, he gave 4 7 but took the other two pieces back as change. The fifth day, he gave 1 7 so the artist got 5 7 of the bar. The sixth day, he gave 2 7 but took 1 7 back again. And the very last day, the artist got 1 7 so in the end, he had a full bar of gold. Four friends, Josh, Maggie, Jason, and Rosie, were walking in the woods. It was a wonderful day, and they were about to start a picnic. But all of a sudden, the sun turned to black, and they saw dozens of zombies approaching them. The friends started running away, and saw a tunnel. It was dark and scary, but the guys knew exactly that when they crossed it, they'd be safe. They had only 12 minutes to cross the tunnel. It takes Josh one minute to cross it. Jason can do it in two minutes. Maggie thinks it will take her four minutes, and Rosie can cross it in five minutes. Not to risk it, the guys decided to split into two groups. The problem is that they only have one torchlight, and there's no way they go there in four. How can they escape? First, Josh and Jason should cross it with a torchlight while the girls are waiting on the other side. It takes two minutes, plus one minute for Josh to go back. They still have nine minutes. Josh hands the torchlight to the girls, and they cross the tunnel in five minutes. Four minutes left. When the girls are on the other side, they give the torchlight to Jason, who comes back to take Josh in two minutes, and they run back together in another two minutes. The airport security had an emergency alert. There's a man with fake documents trying to fly away from New York. They had three suspects who look almost the same. Which passport is fake? No matter what country a person is from, no passport can have a photo with mountains in the background. All backgrounds should be solid. John's passport has a suspicious photo in it. His documents are fake. Mason is a lifeguard. One day, a girl came up to him asking for help. She said someone had stolen her wallet, which she noticed when she was going to go and grab a soda pop. Mason checked the towel where the girl left her stuff, but the only thing he noticed were her own footprints. Is this girl lying to Mason? The girl was telling the truth. Mason had an eagle eye, and he saw a guy with a fishing rod. He must have stolen the girl's wallet. No one wants to go fish in the public beach. Robbers stole a few precious gems the other day. The police were alerted immediately, but they didn't know where to look for the thieves. Suddenly, they got an anonymous email. Check all the bottles in the cars leaving the town. Best regards, Mr. X. At the end of the day, the officers stopped a car loaded with boxes and bottled water. The bottle bottoms were all covered with paint, so they thought the gems should be in one of them. The level of water was the same in all the bottles, but when one of the officers placed one of them right next to the box, he instantly realized something was off. What was it? The bottle standing next to the box is much lower than those still inside. The police then found there was a double bottom, and the gems were hidden right underneath it. Two friends, Martin and Clyde, had a bet. Martin said he would throw a ball and it would come back to him. He also said there would be no obstacle or wall the ball could ricochet from. Clyde said it was impossible, and he lost. How's that? Martin threw the ball straight up. It obviously came back to him. No magic, just physics. Emily grabbed a really nice muffin at the cafeteria and put it on the office desk. She wanted to save it for later, but when she came back from the meeting, she saw someone had eaten her muffin. There were only three people who could do that, and only one person is telling the truth. Grace said it was Alicia. Alicia said she didn't eat anything. Tina says she didn't eat anything either. Who ate the muffin? It was Tina. Only one person is telling the truth, and it's Alicia. 
If Grace or Tina told the truth, then there would be two truthful people, but Emily knew only one person wasn't lying. Patrick really wanted to come to a private party, but the security would ask each person if they knew the secret access code. Patrick decided to overhear their conversations. When the person came up to the entrance, the security said six, and the guest said three. Then the security said 10 to the second visitor, and the reply was three as well. The third visitor also said three, but the security said two. Patrick thought he was ready to join the best party in town. When he came up to the entrance, the guard said seven, and Patrick replied three. The security didn't let him in. What should Patrick have said to get into that fancy party? He should have said five. The guest needed to count letters. Six, 10, and two have three letters. That's why the answer was three. In the word seven, there are five letters. Ben loved diamonds. For some time, he would spend $5,000 a day on precious stones. At some point, he realized he had too many gems, so he started selling them at $3,000 a piece. Sometime later, he became a millionaire. How is that possible if he was obviously losing money? Before his gem rush, Ben used to be a billionaire. Since he started losing money, he became only a millionaire. A vampire moved to a big city where nobody knew him to start a brand new life. Still, he just couldn't help it and started biting locals every single night. People got scared and invited a private investigator to solve the problem. A couple of days later, Detective Reitman had three suspects. He decided to visit each of them to find out who the vampire was. After visiting all the houses, he was sure he found the vampire. Who was it? Well, the man on the left has loads of garlic in the kitchen, and vampires are scared of it. The second suspect had a lot of silver-plated accessories, earrings, piercings, and a chain. Vampires don't really like silver. The guy in the blue shirt is a vampire. Long ago, in the kingdom of riddles, a criminal was caught. The guards took him to the king, who was famous for loving riddles. King Archibald said that if Harry, the criminal, managed to solve his riddle, he would set him free. Harry agreed and Archibald drew a two-foot line on the ground with his foot. The king asked Harry to make this line two times shorter without touching it. In the end, Harry was free. What did he do? Harry drew a four-foot line with his foot so that the one the king drew got two times shorter. Karen took part in a TV quiz where she could win one pound of pure gold. This quiz wasn't like ordinary ones. At the end of the show, the host brought her three large jars. Each of them has one pound of pure gold inside, plus some unpleasant surprise. The first jar has venomous snakes inside, the second one is full of acid, and the third one is filled with boiling hot water. Karen can only use her hands to get the gold out of the jars. She has 30 minutes to think. Which one should she choose? Karen should choose the one with hot water. It cools down pretty fast, and it's gonna get lukewarm in half an hour. Guess who's rich now? Robert went on a business trip, but returned home a day earlier. He found his wife in the bedroom, reading. Do you think she's lying to him? Yes, Robert's wife is overdressed for a reading night. Also, look, there's someone's foot under the bed. Now your task will be to decide which person of the two is in the wrong. Ready? Here's the first one. Quinn and Eliza can't swim. This summer, they both decided to learn how to do it finally. Quinn went to the river near her house. Eliza went to the lake with her friends. They both jumped into the water alone. Who's in greater danger? Quinn. If she starts drowning, no one will be able to help her. Also, the water in the river isn't steady, so it's dangerous to learn there. Chloe and Everly went to go to a party their classmates are throwing, but it's a school night, so their parents banned them from going. 
Chloe decided to go out of her bedroom window, and Everly wanted to sneak out from the back door. Who won't make it to the party tonight? Everly, most probably. Chloe is acting quite risky, but she might manage the trip. But Everly's mom is right there around the corner, reading. She'll definitely see her daughter trying to sneak out. Hazley and Annabelle plan to go to the movies with their friends tonight. Meanwhile, they're enjoying a hot summer day. Who is not going to make it to the movies? Hazley. She's about to cook the meat that has been standing in the sun for a while. By the evening, she'll probably get food poisoning. Liberty and Cleo went on vacation to Greece. Now they're about to jump off a cliff. Who's in danger? Liberty, there are rocks under the cliff she's about to jump from. Nova made her daughter stay at home and study instead of going to a friend's birthday party. Allison's daughter had to spend the entire day in her bedroom instead of going to the movies. Teenagers come down to dinner at 7 o'clock. Which parent didn't notice they were being lied to? Nova, it's raining and her daughter has wet hair. It means she was outside and not sitting in her bedroom. Beth and Kylie are having fun outside during their winter break. Beth is learning how to skate on the lake, and Kylie is skiing in the forest. Who is not smart? Beth, the ice on the lake is cracking and there's no one around to help her. William and Daniel are driving to work and they're both running very late. Who's doing something really wrong? Daniel, he's driving way over the speed limit in the neighborhood. All the money from the city bank was taken in the middle of the day without anybody noticing. The room where it was stored was found completely empty, not counting a signature note saying 7718. The police arrested three most known criminals in the city, Bill, Dove, and Alex. The problem was that they didn't know which one was the robber because they didn't find any fingerprints. What's your call, detective? If you turn the paper around, the numbers will turn into a name. Bill. He must be the robber this time. Right before sunset, a peasant boy was caught by the king's palace. The king was very mad and didn't want to let him go just like that. He loved all kinds of riddles, so he gave the boy a chance to escape. He said that the boy could walk out of any of the three doors, and if he stayed safe, he'd be free. Behind the first door, there was a huge pot with water that was boiled just in the morning. Behind the second door, there were three hungry lions. Behind the third door, there was a raging fire. The boy made his choice and managed to leave. Which door did he walk out of? He walked out of the first door. If the water was boiled in the morning, by sunset, it would already be barely warm. Mrs. Quinn, a mother of four, went to work. She left a $50 bill on the kitchen table for her oldest daughter, Katie, to go shopping. Later that day, Katie told her that she couldn't find it. Mrs. Quinn told her to look for it, and Katie asked each one of her siblings. Serena texted, The money was there, but I didn't touch it. Hannah texted, I put it under some plates so that it doesn't fly away. Della texted, There was a pile of yesterday's junk mail. I threw it away. Maybe the money was there. Who took the money? It must have been Della. There was no mail when Mrs. Quinn left the bill on the table, so Della is making things up. Aurora and Autumn were spending their summer in the countryside. They loved to go on long walks and explore the surroundings. One day, they found an abandoned hotel and just walked in. Everything there was crushed, and the glass was shattered. 
They took some photos and were looking through them at home. One of the photos scared them. Which one and why? Probably this one. Look, there's a mirror, and they're not reflected in it. Amelia and Dakota are sisters. Their grandmother gave Amelia a bracelet, but they both loved it. So, Dakota often steals the bracelet from her. Once, Amelia came home and noticed that the bracelet was gone. She knocked on her sister's door. Dakota opened the door but noticed that it was her sister and shut it. A bit later, Amelia broke into the room and started searching for the bracelet, but she didn't find it anywhere. On her way out, she remembered something and managed to find her bracelet. Where was it? Amelia remembered that when Dakota opened the door, she was wearing a t-shirt. The next time, she was already wearing a long sleeve shirt. She put on the bracelet and was hiding it under the sleeve. That's why Amelia didn't find it in the room. Spencer woke up in a dungeon. She didn't know what had happened, but there was a door. Spencer tried to open it, but it was shut. There were three buttons. On one button, there was a circle. On the second one, there was a triangle. On the third one, there was a rectangle. One button will set her free, and the other two will lock the door forever. There was a note saying, 1, 5, 7, 11. Which button should she press to get out? You might have noticed that there's a clock right above the door, and it's there for a reason. If you draw lines connecting 1, 5, 7, and 11, you will get the shape of a rectangle. So Spencer should press the button with a rectangle on it. Lucas, the heir of a rich gentleman, visited his cousin, Kai, for a cup of tea. They were talking about water polo when suddenly Lucas couldn't breathe anymore. Kai called the doctor, who said that Lucas had been poisoned. Both men were drinking the exact same tea. How did Kai manage to poison his cousin? The poison must have been on Lucas's cup. When he touched it with his lips, he probably licked it off. There's a town where it's only allowed to have fun and eat candy. No one ever reads or studies. Mrs. Relum came home after a long and fun day at the club. Her three daughters spent a fun day at home. She asked them what they'd been doing. Hannah said that she was watching TV all day long. Elle said that she spent the day in a water park. Ava said that she and her friends had had a candy-eating marathon. Still, Mrs. Rellin could tell that one of her daughters lied and actually spent all day reading. Who was it? It was Hannah. Take a closer look at the books on her table. Most of them have perfect spines, but this one has a bent spine, so Hannah was reading it. The woman called the police and reported that she'd been robbed. Here's a recording of what she said. I went to the ladies' room to fix my makeup because I was on a date. Suddenly, someone approached me from behind and hit me on the head with something heavy. I blacked out, and it took me several minutes to come. I'm still feeling dizzy. I don't know what the person looked like. I didn't see anything. I was reapplying my lipstick. The police refused to fill in the report and sent her home. Why? If the woman was applying her lipstick, she must have been looking in that huge mirror every bathroom has. No one could have approached her from behind without her noticing it. She probably just lied and made up the whole story. An iced tea cafe owner reported that someone had stolen all the money when he had left for two minutes. The police interrogated three customers. Tatum, a teenager, said that she'd been listening to music and minding her own business. Charles, a middle-aged man, said that he'd just arrived a couple of minutes ago and hadn't seen anything. Skylar, a doctor, said that she had been focusing on her book and her drink and had seen nothing. Who's guilty? Charles said that he'd just arrived, but look, the ice in his drink has melted. He definitely has been there for a while, not just a couple of minutes.
Holly went to the supermarket to buy a watermelon. She found these four watermelons, but only Uh one of them is edible. Can you guess which one? The first watermelon is a hologram. See those flashing pixels? The tail of the second watermelon is a green snake. Probably not the safest choice. And the fourth watermelon has little cracks. So Holly should choose the third watermelon. One dark, cold night, Harry and Pam were chilling together in their country house. Harry was watching a movie while his wife Pam enjoyed her favorite mystery book. Suddenly, all electricity went out. Harry decided to go to bed, but Pam decided to finish the book. There was no artificial light around, but this fact didn't stop Pam. How is that possible? Pam was listening to an audiobook on her phone. It's big on Saturday and Sunday. It's small on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. It's absent on Monday and Friday. What are we talking about? It's the letter S. Bella and Ken took a flight to Europe to celebrate their honeymoon. It took them two and a half hours to reach the destination. After spending two weeks together, they flew back home. However, it took 150 minutes this time, even though the plane flew at the same speed. Can you guess why? Turns out that two and a half hours are exactly 150 minutes. Karen went camping in a jungle with her three best friends. They had a wonderful dinner and went to sleep. In the morning, Karen woke up first and found out that someone had eaten all the food from the bag. She questioned her friends. Josh said, I was very tired and fell asleep as soon as my head touched the pillow. I don't know what happened. Leah said, I left the tent in the middle of the night to go to the toilet. The food was in the bag near the tree where we left it. Wendy said, I left the tent at night and spent some time stargazing. I ate just one chocolate, I swear. Who ate the food? It was the monkey who was hiding in the tree. See those footprints around the bag? They are definitely not human. Gerald is a college dean. Somebody stole his car this morning. Soon the police found it across the street. The thief hit a pole and escaped. The police interviewed three suspects. Holly said, I was busy having classes all morning. Then I went for a walk with my friends. Brian said, I was checking the test papers. Rob said, I skipped classes and spent the day at my girlfriend's studio. Can you guess who stole the car? It was Holly. Take a closer look inside the car. She lost one of her earrings. The combined age of Jenny and Jasmine is 49 years old. Jenny is twice as old as Jasmine was when Jenny was as old as Jasmine is now. How old are the sisters? Jenny is 28 and Jasmine is 21. Lisa likes grapes, but not potatoes. She likes squash, but not lettuce. Also, she likes peas, but not onions. Following the same rule, will she like pumpkins or apples? Pumpkins. Because Lisa only prefers things that grow on vines. Which of the following words don't belong to this group and why? Courts. All the other words are anagrams of each other. Two people participated in a contest. They had to hold something. Finally, the jury announced the winner. 
it was a person with their hands and feet tied. How can this be possible? It's all simple. The contestants had to hold their breath, and the tied person managed to hold it the longest. Becky is thinking about a seven-letter word that we read very often. Letters 5, 6, and 7 grow every year. Letters 3 and 4 are the same. Letters 3, 2, and 5 cover over 70% of the world. What word is Becky thinking of? The correct answer is message. Our age grows every year, and the C covers over 70% of the planet. Amy is looking at Nick, and Nick is looking at Mia. Amy is married, and Mia is not. Is a married person looking at the unmarried person? Will you go with a yes or a no? Or is this information insufficient? The correct answer is yes. Two combinations are possible here. If Nick is married, Mia, who is unmarried, is looking at him, who is married. If Nick is unmarried, we still have Amy, who is married. In this case, she's looking at Nick, who is single, which meets the requirements too. Five friends were eating apples. Amy finished before Bob, but after Cat. Dan finished before Eve, but after Bob. Can you figure out the exact order in which they finished the apples? Cat, Amy, Bob, Dan, and Eve. Eric's job is to guard a supermarket parking lot. One day, he was walking around the area as usual and noticed that someone had parked the car in the middle of the driveway. He questioned four women. Ladies, who is the owner of this car? All four women replied, it's not my car. Eric took a closer look at the vehicle and figured out its owner right away. Can you guess which of these women is the owner of the car? It's the first lady. She's the only person who's not wearing a bag. Her bag is in the car. Peter came home in the evening and found his car wrecked. His three roommates were there. Peter decided to find out who was guilty, so he questioned them. Josh replied, I didn't touch your car. I was walking the dog. Mike said, that wasn't me. I was playing football with my friend. And Will said, "Mm, nothing special happened today. I was just hanging out with our neighbors. Can you spot the liar? It's Will. He said he'd visited the neighbors, but nobody lives in this abandoned house. Plus, his cheek looks like he was in a crash. Sophie was sleeping. Suddenly, a robber broke into her apartment. He locked Sophie in the bathroom and asked her to stay quiet. Then, the robber began to collect cash and jewelry around the apartment. Suddenly, the phone started ringing. The robber told Sophie to pick up and talk without giving away the situation. Sophie picked up the phone. It was her husband. She said, Oh, hi, darling. Is it an emergency, darling? Give me a call when you land. I'll cook your favorite meal that will help you relax after your business trip. Then she hung up. Ten minutes later, the police arrived at Sophie's house and caught the robber. Can you guess how the police learned about the robbery? Sophie played with the mute buttons. She pressed mute on specific parts of her conversation to make her husband only hear emergency, call, and help. And he called the police right away. Rick woke up in a weird basement and saw three doors. He has only one chance to escape. If he enters one of the doors, he won't be able to use them again. The first door leads to a room with high-voltage wires hanging above the wet floor. Behind the second door, there's a room filled with water and piranhas swimming in it. 
The third door leads to a space where flesh-melting acid rain is falling from the ceiling. Which door is more or less safe to enter? Rick should choose the first door. He'll be okay if he won't let his body come in contact with the wires and the wet floor at the same time. Jerry called his wife Robin and told her that he would be home by 7 o'clock. They didn't plan anything special for that evening, but when he arrived at 2 minutes past 7, Robin was furious. Why was she so angry? Any ideas? She thought her husband would come home after work by 7 p.m., but he appeared by 7.02 a.m. the next morning. When the day after tomorrow is yesterday, today will be as far from Wednesday as today was from Wednesday when the day before yesterday was tomorrow. What is the day after this day? Can you guess? It's Thursday. Harry and Barry are two magicians performing this evening in two nightclubs on the same street. But one of them is fake. Can you guess who? It's Barry. Take a closer look under the magician's tuxedo. On the right, you can see a restaurant employee badge with his name on it. He must be a waiter who came instead of the real magician. A monkey, a squirrel, and a bird are racing to the top of a coconut tree. Who will get the banana first, the monkey, the squirrel, or the bird? None of them, because bananas don't grow on coconut trees. Bonnie is cooking dinner. She has three stoves, a gas stove, a wood stove, and a coal stove. But only one match. What should she light first of all? The match! You are a bus driver. Nine people get on the bus, and three people get on. Then, two more people get on, and another one gets off. Finally, four more people get on, and two get off again. How old is the bus driver? Whatever your age is, remember the question? You're the driver. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos.